Good evening, Satwa. It's I, Cow Defender. I'm going to do a quick and dirty response to some of the last podcast. Uh, most of it's from the first 15 minutes. Uh, most of it might be my biased opinion. Some is based on actual fact. Uh, the first point that I want to address, this will be a separate video just for this one. I might ramble on other issues on another one. But it's the McDonald's coffee thing. Pretty much what I heard was the propagation, the continuation of propaganda, where, where the uh, big business has wanted to implant an idea, a notion into everyone's mind, and, uh, and it's completely altered culture as a result. So here's how it goes. So everyone points to the McDonald's hot coffee thing as the ultimate point of the abuse of the system, of violation of the spirit of the system, of just how incredibly lame... Uh, and, and tortious Americans can be. They're all so lawsuit happy. Uh, and, and, and it makes it so many honest, hardworking Americans have no interest in suing anyone because they think it's lazy. They think that it's part of not earning. So, uh, essentially this story, if you look deep into it, involves an old lady and a cup of coffee and third degree burns. You know, that's all pretty obvious. Pretty stupid, she put really, really hot coffee in her lap in the middle, right between her legs. So yeah, that was dumb. What wound up happening, though, is it turns out that she complained to McDonald's. It's too hot. The burns are too severe. I'm an old lady. These bills are expensive. So she called up to complain on a complaint line. She calls up, and as the legend has it, basically the guy said, well, you know, we get a lot of these. And she said, I just want you to cover my medical expenses. This is expensive. I can't cover it. You guys had this too hot. He said something to the effect of, Lady, if everyone who burned themselves on our coffee was to be paid their medical bills, we would be out a lot of money. So, basically, go screw, go screw yourself. This pretty much upset her, and she said something along the lines of, Well, maybe I'll sue you, and he said, Well, I'd like to see you try. So she did. And it wound up being pretty much a product's liability case. Not all that sexy of a case. But what it all boiled down to is the fact that there is a line on these coffee machines, a temperature setting. Above this line, severe burning occurs. So almost anybody else who has this, Wendy's, Sonic, and Burger King, I think, all have pretty much the same coffee machine. There's a line that says, do not put above this line, because it's dangerous. McDonald's always decided to have it above that line. They were the only ones who did it. They violated sort of a, a practice that was standard across the industry. And the reason that the line had been set was because of third-degree burns. All the other ones set their coffee in a way that third-degree burns couldn't occur. So, this played out poorly for McDonald's. And the notion of punitive damages is to make a punishment that doesn't necessarily reflect, reflect the crime, but instead a punishment that can be felt. That if you fine McDonald's $10,000 for this, they do not feel that at all. It's, it's just the minorest of bumps. So instead, what wound up happening was damages were awarded in the amount of profit that is made in one day from McDonald's coffee. One day of profit was, was gobbled up by this, and it was appealed. And McDonald's pretty much made it clear, we will appeal this for the rest of your life, and you will die never having seen any of it. So, uh, essentially, backs, there were backroom dealings, and uh, they wound up coming to a settlement with a gag order. What this meant was, she got some amount of money, we do not know how much or how little, and essentially she was never allowed to tell her side of the story. It's sealed. We, we, we don't know how much she ultimately settled for. So McDonald's settled, it was all said and done, and they had a voice and she did not. And the fun bit of this is, uh, all the big companies that had nothing to do with McDonald's saw an opportunity here. Most famously, and most remembered by me at least, is the fact that GE owns NBC, and they saw an opportunity to keep everyone scared and change culture to make it so everyone hates lawsuits. So they continually gave notes to Jay Leno, keep the coffee thing in the monologue. I, th I think that I'd heard that as long as 18 months after the case had settled, he was still getting notes to keep it in his monologue. So it worked. It changed culture. In the United States, all of a sudden, everyone became... <laughs> the notion that if you sue somebody, you're lazy and you suck. So I heard that in the show, and I wanted to address it, 
and wanted to make sure that you understood that whatever you think of the, the spirit of the law or the letter of the law is that that particular case changed the spirit of the law. It, it created this notion uh, of these lawsuit happy people and scared people away from occasionally seeking things they're entitled to. And I've seen a lot of that in my life and uh, well anyway, I just wanted to get that bit of the truth out there. So maybe I'll be back with part two.